Perfect Talk, because on this episode, we got to talk about the backlash from that Diddy video. Yeah, a lot of celebrities either got to double back and explain their comments or lack thereof. LaMelo Ball is being sued for running over a kid's foot. That's crazy. Amber Rose has shown her support for a presidential nominee, but which side does she take? And Cameron appears on CNN and turns it into an event to remember. Who booked me for this joint? We got that and much, much more. I mean, you're she's grabbing her neck. It's the Perfect Talk Podcast, baby. Let's get it. What's good, y'all? It's your man DJ Playboy back with another episode of the Perfect Talk Podcast. And you know I'm holding it down for y'all. I'm in the building with my dog, my guy, my partner. Spec, what's good, brother? Not much, man. Glad to be back on the show. Spec back in the building with y'all, man. Anything new going on? Man, just work, change of weather. Yep. It's been hot. We've been getting <laughs> some hot days, short time. It is. It is. Yep. You right about that. It's my birthday, Memorial Day. Mm-hmm. You know, by the time y'all hear this, happy Memorial Day to mm-hmm. everybody. You know what I mean? Out there, by the time you hear this, Memorial Day will pass. My birthday will pass. Our 40th birthday, though. That's something big looking forward yeah, no. to. Yeah, man. We getting up there. <laughs> I did a 5K uh, last week. How was that? Five is my second five. Matter of fact, show y'all right here. Show y'all my bling bling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, it's my second five k. Okay. It's, it's, it's a program my daughter does. It's called Girls on the Run. Um, and it's dope because she likes track and stuff like that. I don't really know any of track programs at her age that I would have been able to get her in at this point. Okay. Um, and so it was cool that she did that. And then she also started doing some track stuff at her school, which it, it kind of it threw through her gym class. I think they got her in that. But like. She, she, I love it because it just it gave me something to, to train for. We had like maybe two months so that we, we knew the 5K was coming. Okay. And then I just kind of like really just, just getting on my grind. But um, I realized I got to start doing some cooler 5Ks because like, like this ain't, you can't, this ain't brag worthy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like for everybody listening to the audio out there, it's like a, a, the, the medal they gave us. It was a cupcake and it's like they 10th anniversary. So it says 10 on it. Um, I, I ain't going for it. As, uh, as soft as this is. When, when I finished and they was hitting them out, I was like, give me, my, good. <laughs> give me good. my medal, man. <laughs> I got that. And then we got the free shirt. Hold on. I got the shirt back here. And that's how I realized another reason I got to do some better, cooler 5Ks because, like, the shirt ain't cool. <laughs> what well, am I going to wear this to? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like... I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna edit in this. <laughs> I'm be in the studio editing in this, man. But uh, yo, shout out to girls on the run. It was definitely a dope experience. It was super fun. I got my medal, second medal. Hopefully, we get a third year. You know what I'm saying? We go do it. But I, I do want to look for some 5Ks in the area and see, you know what I mean, if we could get yeah, down. I'm sure so. there's a lot of them. But yeah, man, let's get right into it, man. You know how we start every episode off? Click a spotlight story. Sometimes a story in the news that might be getting a lot of shine, might not be getting a lot, but I'm going to shine a lot on it, man. And uh, this one's been getting a ton of shine. We spoke about it last episode, man. Diddy, the video with him and Cassie dropped. But it's kind of been like an aftermath effect of all the things that have been happening since that video's dropped. You know what I mean? Uh, first, the video dropped. Then he made his little apology. What'd you think about that apology, bro? It sounded like an interlude. Like, yeah, was- I mean, <laughs> it, it, you, it's one of those things. It's too late. Not, I don't want to say it's too late for an apology because when you have the opportunity, you should always apologize. But at the end of the day, nobody want to hear that at the, anymore. Like, can't even... I don't even personally believe it. Like, it's not... It's not sincere. What's the appeal to of doing the um, like the telephone or the webcam apology? Like I feel like like you're trying to like be down to earth and like nah, it look more professional. <laughs> no. Make it like make it like Kobe's press conference where yeah. you apologize like, <laughs> like you know, the like, president. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you're doing it on your backyard. <laughs> like, uh, I don't get that. That makes it seem really disingenuous. But then obviously everything he said was corny too. Right. But um, he couldn't mention his name, which I gave him some flack for on the last episode. He but couldn't then, mention what? He didn't mention her name. Oh, uh, okay, he, yeah, okay, a lot okay. of people were like, yo, he didn't say Cassie's name in there. You couldn't say da 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 da. But then we came to find out, due to their settlement, they actually aren't allowed to discuss each other. Right. So that's that's why he didn't say his name. Now a lot of people were like, there are ways around that that you could have directly yeah, 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 towards I mean, her to. without saying her name and without saying anything. And it more so sounded like you were apologizing for not being the people, the person people thought you were. You know what I mean? As opposed to being a scumbag that, that did what he did. That was a crazy video to watch. You know what I mean? I feel bad for that. Like, it was hard to watch. Yeah. I, know I mean, it, you've heard stories about Diddy um, over the years, but it's one of those things. Until you actually see a video, it just hits different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, oh, everything. Yeah, it's, everything is different until you see the video. I think we learned that with Ray Rice. I think because we heard about the Ray Rice thing before the video dropped, if I'm not mistaken. It came out like a couple of days later. So yeah. We heard about it. We was like, eh, that sounds crazy. Sounds bad. But even that didn't pale yeah. in comparison to this. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. This is another level, man. Um, and it really makes you think what made him feel that comfortable 
in a public setting in a that's, hotel. Yeah, that's crazy. So it makes you think like, anybody could have walked out the room. Like he was just sitting there at that that one time when he was face. yeah, <laughs> like just sitting in the chair. <laughs> I'm imagining she's like in a corner somewhere, right? Like that's nutty, bro. Like it looked like they were in the hallway. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get why he would feel that comfortable, which makes me really fearful about the stuff that's not caught on video and, and that we we haven't seen. Um, I guess he paid fifty grand to get the, the surveillance footage of that in his own possession, so that's why he took us so long to see it. But I guess what he, he didn't know. Oh it, wait, so then how did it get out then? I heard, and I don't know how true this is. Don't don't quote me on this. I heard when they gave him the the video. I don't know if they knew about this. They also gave Cassie one. So I believe when she made that lawsuit, she was like, I have video footage. Because she, she describes that in the lawsuit. Okay. So I believe they probably, maybe they felt bad for her. And maybe they was like, I'm going to take this 50 grand, but I got to sleep at night. Right, and they right, gave right. her the video too. To, okay. Hey, so he paid you 50 grand for it to just kind of hush it up. Yeah. Whoever did that backdoor Puffy pretty much, you know what I'm saying? But like, mm. it's also like... 50 grand, you lowballing me, bro. Like, I All can right. ruin you with this. Like, get out of here. So, um, mm. Cassie released a statement. Said, thank you for all the love and support uh, from my family, friends, strangers, and those I have yet to meet. The outpouring of love has created a place for my younger self to settle and feel safe now. Hold on. I got to pull this closer. This is <laughs> my 40-year-old vision. <laughs> you know, catching up with me right now. Um, but this is the only, this is only the beginning. Domestic violence is the issue. It broke me down. Someone I never thought I would become with a lot of hard work. I am becoming uh, better today and I will always be recovering from my past. Um, she said a lot, but I'll get to the end. The healing journey is never ending, but this support means everything to me. Thank you. Love always, Cassie. Um, and and it, yeah, you got to imagine like, I don't know if she herself leaked that video. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. It, pop, it could have hit her from left field, too. You know what I'm saying? Because if I gave him a video, and I gave, I'm keeping one for myself, too. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So, it's possible she might have just woke up to it. You know what right. I'm saying? Which has to has to uh, be hard from her standpoint. Um, but a lot of people were like, a lot of people didn't know how to handle it. Like, I believe Joe Budden on his podcast had a segment talking about it, right? And I think if you, um, on the Patreon, like, you can, you have access to it. But I think he removed it from the actual episode that went public. The segment talking about Puffy because he said something in there. He's like, "Y'all gonna take my words and try to cancel me for it." So he took it out, which ended up actually getting him backlash. So, but <laughs> what did he it. say? I didn't catch it. Okay, it, but it, it. I think it was along the same lines. Like, I don't really want to speak on it, which is odd when that's your job. It's you speak on it when other people go through similar situations. Mm -hmm. So to kind of have that attitude about it makes it seem kind of fishy. Uh, and then removing it from the episode, I think would. Just gave people something to run with. His ex girlfriend to Harry brought up his his allegations against him. Oh well, that's why he. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't. You know what? What's the saying? Throw rocks at a and, glass. Or what is it? You can't throw rocks when you live in glass houses. People yeah, in glass houses should like not that, throw stones. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it, well, you can discuss it. Like for instance, I. Well, I, you can't be on a high horse. Oh, I, I. No, I, no. Like, but you shouldn't. But I think you and you shouldn't ever look at it from that standpoint. Oh, Whether you've done it before or not, you shouldn't. Because we, I think I said this last episode. If if our worst moments were all caught on videotape, we'd be dropping apology <laughs> videos too. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like, and I, I, I guess it's true. Everybody can right. come to that. Like, no one wants their worst moments caught on tape. As and I'm not defending Puffy in any way, shape, or form. I, as someone I held in very high regard, and and now I don't. But at the end of the day, I know human beings are human beings, right. and we all have moments that we're not proud of. And so I don't think you should ever approach by that. But you could discuss it because then it looks like you're defending it. You're kind of yeah, like yeah. like like brushing it under the table. Um, and so if you did have that in your past, I mean, you you don't have to get specific, but you know, I, I too have had situations in my past that I'm not proud of mm -hmm. on you know on some shit like that. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, mean, there's a way to talk. There's a way about to talk it. about it without yeah, and and. I think what happens is like you seen in the Shannon Sharp Shaq situation, you get paid. I didn't even know about anything about that. Oh, now you didn't know about it? Yeah, they were beefing. Basically, over Shaq said Nikola Jokic shouldn't have got MVP. He would have gave it to SGA. He told that directly to Nikola Jokic. You know how yeah, Shaq yeah, is real like that. It. So then Shannon Sharp was like, that's from a place of hate because he's a big man with way more MVPs than you now. And that's where that really came from. That had nothing to do with that. I don't know which is which, but at the end of the day, Shannon Sharp gets paid to talk about sports. This is sports related. He shouldn't be able to have an opinion on it. Shaq 
does the same thing as well. Now, I'm not saying they shouldn't be able to go back, and, but for them to get in their feelings about it, because Shaq started bringing up his stats, and I'm in the top 10 in the NBA, you're not in the top oh, anything in the NFL. <laughs> I, I, I. And they started getting into like a weird place where y'all look way too old for this. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, back, bring that back. A Joe Budden, despite what he might have been through in his past, can talk about this, but what it does now, he opens himself up to everybody wanting to do it. And I think that's what he was trying to avoid. Because it ain't necessarily Puffy's going to come back at him. It ain't necessarily one of his uh, competing podcasters are going to come at him. The commenters are going to be like, uh, every, you know what I mean? Every line he says in the podcast, they're be like, but then someone else said that you do. So right. I see where he's coming from. It's, it's a no win. Kelly Price kind of put out a supportive, religious type message, and people took it, interpreted it as pray for Puffy. That is criminal um none of us can unsee what we saw for those of you who got what i was trying to say and i was compelled to say it i don't need the clout um so for those of you who are saying that you know you're the one who's inside my life so i guess you need it um it was really more of a warning. Like when it's all said and done, we're body, soul, and spirit, right? So if someone has a problem with alcoholism or drugs or whatever it is, if you put them in a 90 day program and they feel better at day 45 and they check themselves out, the work has not been finished. The work has not been complete. And she was like, nah, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying that pray for victims, pray, but even the even people, the who, people do bad who do the dudes, thing, you gotta pray they, for them too. You pray yeah. for them. Uh, that's yeah. normal. Yeah, like, but, they, but you know the internet. They yeah. want to hop on something, and then she's done work with him, so it's, it's look, they're like, oh, now why are you defending? And it's like, come that's on. Not, you, you know, you got to pray for those people that they find that healing. Right. Like, that's what that's about. That's all. Um, so she had to come out. Slim Thug, I think, had it the, the worst. Slim Thug, hold on, let me pull up Slim Thug's comments. Back and getting Bill Cosby, coming back and getting Puff. I don't believe in that, man. When she go down, speak on that shit right then, or it's out of there. It should be null and void. You shouldn't even have no type of nothing. You should be. You shouldn't be able to do shit unless you must let the people know what happened immediately. It should be a time limit on. That. What happened was you was trying. You got around them up. Stand up on love. This is what happened. I'm going to tell you what always happened, right? You was with a billionaire with all this bread all this time. And then you went followed your heart to with a trainer. That motherfucker apartment got smiled in the bitch. That lifestyle fell off. Now it's struggle time. The love wearing off. And now you trying to come up with ways to figure out how to get paid. Now, I, now I'm healed and I can talk about it. I want to expose niggas in my books. He's like, nah, when the stuff happens, come out with it. You know what I mean? When it, at the time. Don't come years later. Don't go to the blogs. Don't try to like out people's business. Oh. Which he maybe may have been talking from a place from his, his own experiences. And maybe that's or somebody he knows. But he felt very passionate about um, it. Only to come back now when the video drops and... and, and I hope he did he issue an apology. He did issue an apology, but he didn't do it in the video form, which I think if you say something in video and then your comment is written out, kind of that seems kind of weak. But he wrote, um, "Damn, Diddy, I try to ride with the black man who had no charges yet, but I can't stand behind this. I'll take this L, but I still ride with my people until I see some sort of proof. I don't believe in blogs or civil suits." Um, then he addressed Cassie directly and said, "Apologies to Cassie and whoever else was on the right side this time." I don't believe in civil suits. Okay. I think, yeah, what he's saying, if you did a crime, then to come 10 years later with a civil suit, but you wasn't trying to have me arrested, you wasn't trying to go through that process. You still can get a civil suit in the moment, too. Yeah, you right. could get someone found guilty, like, right. and then still do a civil suit. So it's like, I, I, got the, I think he was trying, and, and um, we have to imagine that this happens to some extent. People are accused of crimes the that they, they didn't do, and you know what I mean? So that's probably what I think that way he was more so standing yeah. by it, um, but because Cassie's a public figure because this video dropped out and he didn't have to say anything he could have just slid back and not say anything so if you're gonna do it like damn diddy i tried to ride <laughs> i'm sure a lot you know, of people he apologized to diddy more a than a lot of people felt like that though because you know when i'm sure when those charges came out certain people ain't want to be like no but then once the evidence is just like dang well cassie's state 
Cassie, I did not get that vibe from. Cassie was too detailed. It was too much. And I think their relationship was always kind of weird to me because mm-hmm. they were like public, but they weren't. And I was like, I could see that. Yeah. When I heard her allegations, yeah. I didn't, did, like in my head, I was, it probably happened, but you know, there's no video evidence. <laughs> <laughs> so now, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold him to it, but it probably and, did and the, happen. And the quick settlement, because we only got a tip of the iceberg about, she was, the strategy was to shame him to settle. And we only got the tip of the, tip of the iceberg, and he settled real quick. He didn't want to know what the rest of the iceberg <laughs> looked like. You know what I'm saying? So that part, too. But, like, and nothing against none of these people. Once again, if you were a victim of something, I think the law should be you should be able to bring it up 80 years later. But compared to the Cassie case, when some of the people started coming out from, like, 1992, I can see why some people are like, yo, <laughs> that's a long ass time. That's 30 years. You know right. what I'm saying? So, like, I definitely could get why people... No, I, I got the Because I... I... I, I, I'll be honest, even like with Trump, like when he was running and then all these alligators oh, from 1985, yeah. I'm like, come on, nobody want to hear this shit. Like because nobody like, want to hear all this, this old 20 years ago. Like we all did, like we, people change. So I'm not really interested in hearing something this old. Yeah. Like, but Trump is, he was specifically running for the president. So it seemed like, where'd this come from? Cause it's like, he was famous all the time. You could have. It's not like he just got in the line like now you're like, let me come out with something. Yeah. It was because he was running for president. You know, you could help him. No, we've seen it. Bill Cosby. Yeah, exactly. Like his shit was 80s, 90s. It's like, ah. <laughs> like, so long ago. But what like. I do think is um, from a, the victim perspective of it, I won't say from a woman's side of it. I'll say from the victim because they're male victims and stuff too. But like, I think once you see people get away with something, I think that fucks you up to want to like go at them. If you know they did something and you're like, damn, they really just got away with that shit in front of everybody's face. You like I ain't I ain't I ain't yeah. stepping up to that bat. You know what I mean? I, I that's what I think holds a lot of people back in these situations. Well, man. yeah, I mean they they it's, they, they want to make sure they're protected at the end of the day, mm-hmm. and if they come forward against this powerful person, you know. So and Diddy actually got a new allegation this past week. Uh, oh, right, a young lady that. named April Lampos filed allegations of of assault. This was way back though, I believe, in the early two thousands, uh, late nineties. Uh, she was a fashion student, and it's it's not great, you know. what I mean, it's it's at this point too. The timing of it is just so like anything's possible. As bad as you thought Puffy was, I didn't think I would see that what I saw in that video. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So now I was like, I put nothing past you at this point, and, and it's innocent to prove guilty. I guess we still got to live in that world, but it, I mean, you're not making you're no, not winning the done. part of public opinion. No, he's done. Yeah, he's, he's fried. I did. I won't lie. Before the other, before the video, even. I knew it was bad for Diddy. Before the video dropped, I'll say, I think Diddy could have like went somewhere. And maybe, let it blow over for, for a while. Yeah, for a couple of years, get out the limelight, and then we just, like, see you. Now, I don't that's think that's possible. That's what I thought was going to happen. Yeah. Before the, the, um, the video, I thought he was, he didn't have to go anywhere. I thought, let's just say no other allegations came over. I thought he was just going to stay where he was at, but maybe not be as front and center. Right. Not necessarily like have to go to Bali like uh, right, Russell, yeah, yeah. Russell Simmons did and all that. You know what I'm saying? But now it's like, nah, there's no salvage in this, bro. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Whatever. You did what you did, and we can't take that away from you in terms of greatness, but you did what you did in terms of wax too, and that's going to obviously ring much louder than the greatness that you did. Yeah. I mean, that was just a matter of waiting to see what charges just get filed against him. We know he ain't going to beat the charges because, I mean, we see evidence, and who knows what else they have. So, I mean, well, unless the unless the um, he gone, statute of limitations gets him out of everything, but I doubt that. Yeah, it can't because they're starting to extend statute of limitations. Yeah. For certain, so, yeah, it's not looking great. It, I'm not. A, I, I, I don't want to. You're gonna have to do his year in the day. You think so? At least, yeah. I don't want to be a, a conspiracy theorist, but I don't like it now. Maybe because I'm a fan of this person, but now everybody's throwing Jay Z's name around. Jay Z been real quiet. Jay Z. What was Jay Z supposed to do? Like, is he supposed to be out there defending Puff? Is that? No, like, no. I think they're mostly being like quiet, like because they might be coming for him next in terms of. Like, well, I heard that, but like, what is he supposed to be doing? Like, just. I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah, he's quiet. Yeah. What is he supposed to be doing? But, but also that he quiet. But he was just at the Grammy, the last Grammys. He did a whole speech. Mm-hmm. He got an award, right? Like, I'm pretty sure he brought his daughter up on stage. Like, he's not like we haven't seen him at all. You yeah, I mean, I don't know what people but also, are saying. Like, what are they try, but the stuff that they're trying to throw him, I heard Jen Wright, which I believe is 
uh, singer with the Roots who used to tour with Jay Z. Mm-hmm. They, she's been saying some crazy stuff like, "How old was Rihanna when she started working with them?" Mm-hmm. She also came from another country. Is that trafficking? Wow, you know who who gave consent about this type of stuff? People bring up Beyonce's age, which I don't know. I I bet Beyonce was in her twenties when I think her and Jay Z. But then they're like, "What well, did they do officially?" Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so but you know, unofficially, I mean, but yeah. people bring up Aaliyah, people bring up you know Tiara, and I'm like, I think we're reaching right now, and I think it's also weird that we want another black man to fall for some of this stuff. But if you did the crime, you're gonna have to, you know, they're gonna want their pound of flesh. Um, so I just pray. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> man! I, I pray because uh, I don't uh, even want to think. I won't even put our, those vibes out there. A lot of our heroes are hip hop. He's the last one. He kind of is. He's the, <laughs> he's the last one. He kind of is. Yeah, that didn't die of an overdose. Didn't die from getting shot. Didn't die. I mean, I guess we can throw Dre in there, but I never really looked at Dre like that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's really just them two. Snoop. Snoop been holding it down for a good amount of time, staying out of trouble. He got his share of allegations, but he's. Yeah, I mean, but I wouldn't put Snoop necessarily, like... Uh, but Diddy and, and Jay? You don't think he's... Mm-hmm. Snoop is uh, Snoop. Is Snoop. I, I, how could I explain, like... Yeah, I, I mean, Snoop, if, if you, if you, if you want to think, like... <laughs> Snoop not going to jail and nothing bad happening to Snoop is great. For, no, that is great. For yeah, hip-hop for sure. culture, because of... He's so beyond hip hop culture, you know what I'm saying? Whereas Diddy was kind of like that. Like this is why I was is... just talking more so about like the mogul type thing. But I mean, oh, you I can, saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, just to be like an icon in terms of CNN will talk about you, right, right, right. That's what I was... as the president or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's that's really what I was talking about. No, uh, we'll see. We'll, see. we'll see. Like I said, we pray for all the hip hop people out there that have done the right thing. Hope you can stay out of trouble. And if you've done the wrong thing, you know what I mean. You have to. Atone for your sins, man. But, uh, Spec, we got a segment over here, our perfect talk. I don't know if we've ever done it with you here, but it's called Winners and Losers. Somebody got to win the week, somebody got to lose the week. Okay. And this week's winner has to be undisputed, Cameron on CNN. You said this, <laughs> you said winner? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, Cameron wins the week. Cameron was on CNN Newslight with anchor Abby Phillip, and um, it was hilarious. I lived up to the, the fame of Cameron yes. news and interviews. <laughs> you know what I mean? When I seen it, and I, I didn't even hear it yet. It was on mute. But I seen him on, I was like, this is going to be classic. And he lived up to it. Let's show the clip real quick. Everything in the video is egregious. I'm against. I don't support all the charges that's alleged against him. I don't support any of that. Did you recognize right? that I kind of anger at all from your experiences? I don't know like that. What does you mean? Do I be recognized? Did I recognize him? I seen him. What do you mean my experiences? I seen him. I thought it was disgusting. I didn't do a zoom in to see if it was really him or nothing, but... What did you think about the apology that he gave in that other video? He ain't do nothing to me. Cassie need to, need to ask Cassie if she accept the apology. Um, is there something known in the industry about how Diddy treated his artists? So I'm going to get some cheeks after this horsepower joint. Um... Who the talent agent for this joint? Like, you think I'll be sitting around watching what Diddy do and all this? I didn't know this was a Diddy joint that invited me to. Yeah, who? Y'all, who booked me for this joint? Yeah, thanks. Man, come on, man. That's thanks for crazy, joining man. us. Thank you for your time tonight. Yeah, yeah yo, thank, yo, thank you for having me. You enjoy it. When he pulls out the horsepower <laughs> and says, I'm about to get some cheeks <laughs> after this. <laughs> cheeks. <laughs> but I like, I remember one of your first questions when I sent that video to you was like, why would he even go on there? If he didn't want to talk about that. And I like how he responded to that. Like he felt like he was being used. Mm-hmm. And they were going to use him to make another black man look bad. And he was like, no, I'm going to use this to promote what I'm doing. Y'all don't care about none of the positive stuff we do. And I'm going to use this platform to boost my podcast, my YouTube show, my playing course power. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, 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 I think he won the week. It went viral. I think and even CNN had to be pleased, I think. I mean, for yeah. sure. I mean, they yeah. get some, you know, numbers and yeah. views and all of that. It goes viral. People clip it. People show it. I guess I just wouldn't do the interview. I'd just be like, no. But I, I also, I respect you. No, know, but to this point, yeah. that's, that's, like, that's publicity. I mean, <laughs> Free I, I publicity, think. yo. That went nation. Like, that's a Super Bowl commercial level of publicity. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, that's I respect Cameron. I think that was a smart move on his part. And why they would think of all rappers, Cameron would be the guy... That was gonna like sandbag Puffy in that moment to me is like, I think really just because maybe off the strength of that interview that that he had uh, with Mace where they was talking about the dildo, uh, I, yes. and I went to use a bathroom and it was a dildo from sink, 
And Jeez. when I came out, I asked him what's about. He like, that's homeboy's joint. You know, I don't know what it's about. He always have girls over here, but I don't know. I said, this one your sink. This is your bathroom. You're using this bathroom. <laughs> I don't know where his bathroom at. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's word to my son, because stop breathing. I like, saw a dildo um, on the bathroom sink. I think, just, yeah. I think solely off of that. Oh, then they played the clip, too, where he asked Mace about why he didn't take him to Puff. Why he took him to Big. So, I think maybe they felt he had some... Yeah, yeah. That, that, I think it was solely off of that. yeah. Uh, no, was, but but definitely, um, no, he's not the one. <laughs> I don't even know. Who, Fifty would have been a great guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they should have called up. Fifty would have. Yeah. Oh yeah. 50 and he has some, I think he has a. Um, he has rights to like a documentary coming he out. He just sold it. it. He sold Netflix. the rights. Oh, he sold the documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, no, that that's which is wild. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why you don't beef. There's some people you just don't beef 50 with. 50 Cent is one of my them. My man is like, like no, I will on, destroy he's you. He's on the next level. Type <laughs> <laughs> I will destroy you, bro. And this week's loser, man, it's got to be, in my opinion, Amber Rose. She uh, took a picture with Donald Trump and Melania and gave her support. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just I seen a headline that said Amber Rose supports Trump. That's it. I didn't know. Okay, but I think that's weird for a lot of people because she started the slut walk, which is supposed to be for women empowerment. But this is the guy that you know grab him by the, you know what I mean. Um, you could do whatever you want. Amongst to, you know other I mean? things. Amongst the <laughs> e, e, e Jean Carroll, the guy who brags about Roe v Wade, he's the one who got rid of it. For someone who says they stand for women empowerment, I think that was a head scratcher for a lot of people. Um, and then a lot of people use it as a thing to be like. I, this, this is why they, uh, Jocelyn said you ain't black <laughs> you know what I mean I think a lot of people because of this Drake Kendrick shit mm -hmm. if you if you are on the fringes of blackness <laughs> you're not one of us you kind of got to watch how you move for the past three weeks because people are really going to be quick to be like you can't use nigga no more or, you know what I mean you be like my dad is black <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I think these past couple weeks, people really wanted to point out, you know what I mean, to who is black and who's not and who can't. And I think it's Amber Rose or somebody to be accepted by the black community. Not, I don't think anyone is like, would say, point to Amber Rose and be like, this is a beautiful black woman. Right, right, right. But, they would, but someone that I think has been accepted by the uh, black community, you, you got to watch how you move. <laughs> you got to watch how you move. Now, I guess defendants of her will say, you allowed to vote who you want to vote for. And I think in her opinion, she's like, how come Ice Cube get to <laughs> take pictures with Donald, with mm -hmm. Donald Trump? How come you seen your guys as a Bronx representative? You got to tell me how you feel about Chef G and Sleepy Hollow uh, popping up at the Trump uh, rally. Oh, really? Yeah, you see it? No, I didn't see oh, it, I but I mean, you, <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't really surprise me. At the end of the day, younger people, they're not, you know, they're not excited about Biden. And so, I mean, I don't know how you'll get excited about Trump. <laughs> but hey, I mean, to each his own, man. It's yeah. kind of crazy. Like I said, Amber Rose, you you don't always have to be public about your stuff either. Like, vote who you want to vote for. Right. We don't all need to know like who you who you trying to vote for. But yeah, this was this was Chef G or Sleepy Hollow. They drill. I don't know if you look, you've, if you listen to the music. They drill rappers. They're um. I believe they uh they have cases. They have open cases right now, which might be the reason why they did it. One thing, one thing I want to say. One thing I want to say. They always go whisper your accomplishments and shout your failures. Trump gonna shout the wins for all of us. Make America great again. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're not the first. <laughs> They're not the first, you know what I'm saying? But um, I, All I'll say, I mean, Trump will use y'all black people real fast. <laughs> <and forever. laughs> and forget about y'all soon as he don't need it no more, right? Um, but respect, we're going to move on to my favorite part of the show right now, and that's called Have You Heard? I hear headlines in the news. I'll bring it to the table and see if my guy Spec has heard. Did you see the interaction between... Jasmine Crockett, AOC, and Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you know what we're here for? 
You know we're here about uh, just a, a, well, I don't I think you know what you're president. here for. Well, you the one talking about. I guess I, I think your fake eyelashes are messing up. No, what ain't mean. nothing. Hey, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Listen. <laughs> Order, Mr. Chairman. That's beneath would even you order, 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 order of your group. committee. Order. Uh, 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 attack the physical fan. appearance Lady of Wilson's another fan. person. Are your Move feelings hurt? Her words down. Aww. Oh, oh, girl, baby, girl. Oh, really? Don't even. Play, baby, girl. Gonna, I don't. Think we are gonna that. move, and we're gonna take your words down. Thank I you second that motion. That was that was. I was like, oh. <laughs> that was nutty. I didn't. I didn't see the whole. I just recently seen the whole clip. I didn't know. Like she starts cursing at the end. Well, who? I, uh, who? Jasmine Crockett. Oh, did she? Yeah. She's like, no, nah, I'm tired of this shit. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. So the, what I did say to myself. Watch what people take from this. They're just going to take the black woman's reaction out of this. Oh, they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why. I, so I watched them. I'm like, oh, Lord. And then she has the part where she's like, calm down. You're acting. <laughs> but no, when I heard that, I'm like, oh, boy. You don't fucking tell no black woman to calm down. After you started it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Rep Representative Jasmine Crockett uh, of Texas has actually gone the extra mile. Uh, you remember there was a part in there where you're. She says, for clarification, what if I were to say, um, to speak about someone's beach blonde, bad built, butch body? Well, now she's trademarking the phrase, beach blonde, bad built, butch body. I don't know why. <laughs> um, and that's kind of where I'm out. Like, I was like, I was down with this the whole time, but like, I tap out. I don't need my representatives doing merch. <laughs> like, I get it. It was a good moment. I like you stand up for yourself. Now, from her standpoint, she's like someone else just might make shirts off of it or something else, and they might make. So why not her? Right. But to me, if you worried about trademarking and making merch and t-shirts and mugs, like I mean, start a podcast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, you really supposed to be fighting for the rights of the people and, and defending the rights of people. So like, like I said, it was all entertainment. I don't really understand the trademark thing. That's where it's like. Unless it was just to make news to get us to talk about it, right? But yeah, to me, what are you going to start a website? And I mean, it's a it's a trendy, you know, youthful statement. Who's going to wear that though? Who's going to wear a statement saying that? I mean, I won't, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe unless she's going to promote it. Unless they have Marjorie Taylor's Green's face on it, which would be cool if it wasn't you, so nobody would know who it is. You know what I'm saying? Then maybe somebody might wear it. But now it looks like a direct attack. It's, you know what I mean? We can bring it back to you. It's like, it just seems like, um, it seems like we're just doing it for the headline. Mm -hmm. It feels like. But it was definitely very entertaining, though. It was. Go back and forth. <laughs> and like, I also heard rumors. I don't know how true this is. They even said it on CNN. There was somebody alleges that uh, Marjorie Taylor Green and some of her colleagues were drinking before that. And that's why they were acting. Because like, I think that Marjorie Taylor Green asked a question about like, they were there for Merrick Garland. She asked us a question about, I think, the judge in the Trump case. Mm -hmm. And then, like, they're looking at her, and then she, like, says a different name, like, two seconds later. Mm -hmm. And, like, Jasmine Crocker is like, what the fuck are you talking about right now? <laughs> Do you know why we're here? And it's just like, the whole thing was entertaining, like I said, but I tap out on the, uh, on the trademark of it all. Expect, have you heard? LaMelo Ball is being sued for running over a fan's foot. I did see that little kid. They say in the 22-year-old uh, Charlotte Hornets NBA superstar at an event uh, for the Charlotte Hornets uh, was pulling off, and... This, this article I'm saying said hit her son. <laughs> which I, I thought he just ran over the foot, but they say it hit her son with the car, which I guess it was the word oh, you would yeah. use for make it sound worse. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I, the article I read said he ran over his yeah, foot. Yeah, he ran over his foot. Um, but again, or maybe they didn't want to make it seem like he ran over him like fully. But uh, I don't know much about LaMelo Ball outside of basketball. I do know he drives like he's in a video game. I have you've seen the clips, stories. right? Yeah. yeah so. I mean, so I'm like, this ain't great. <laughs> this is like Diddy getting another allegation. I feel like right I've now. even heard him acknowledge I don't stop at red lights either. You see the video of him not stopping at red so, lights. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this when I heard it, um, it kind of sounds on brand. I like. Oh man, that sucks, dude. But what what I am surprised about, I mean, because they also they're also suing the Charlotte Hornets. Yes, because um, it was a it was a fan event, right? Right, yeah. so I mean, I'm surprised they haven't gotten like you know in front of this to settle it by now. Yeah, the, uh, especially uh, lawsuit, since it's a little kid. Mm -hmm. This is bad, bad publicity. Yeah, on the all around. Uh, the lawsuit alleges that Ball's car stopped at a traffic light by the entrance. When fans moved closer to the player's vehicle to catch a glance of him, Ball looked directly into Joseph's face while he stood beside his car before speeding away in the light change. <laughs> Made it seem like some wow. <laughs> But take it from but from his standpoint, he just see a crowd of people coming at him. He like, yo, I'm gonna be stuck here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess you just got that's what comes with it. But it's also like, yo, bro, 
Yeah, you can't run over no kids, bro. <laughs> that ain't gonna be good. Y'all gotta come out of pocket, yeah. I'm su- like you said, I'm surprised that Ball or the Hornets haven't made any public statements about it, and haven't reached out, right. haven't done it. But uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, they get that figured out. And I mean, they could throw him a bag or two. That kid, <laughs> that kid could use a lot of money, man. Are you? I mean, for that, for that, just <laughs> bro. Imagine like you just talking about one of my favorite rappers. Like imagine Puffy ran over your. <laughs> Back in the day, I'm, I'm riding that all the way to the top. Oh, like, yeah, hell yeah, bro. Give me a bag. Can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> take uh, that, take that. You damn right, I'm going to take that. <laughs> Spec, have you heard NCAA has reached a settlement to play college athletes directly? Um, each school will be allowed to distribute around $20 million to their teams. Now, pay the players or the team. So but, it's going to create a, a future revenue sharing model when schools will distribute about $20 million per year directly to athletes. So basically, the before this, it was the NIL deals they were getting their money off of, but they weren't getting directly through the school. Right. Um, the school would basically, like, maybe we could get you these NIL deals, and maybe that would persuade an uh, athlete to go to a specific school, but now they're saying we're going to be directly paying you money. Now, and do different athletes... athletes now that's what I have to imagine. Do they pay them different it amounts? Be based, it says a revenue sharing model. So I'm assuming you bring in more money, you make more money. So if the okay. football team is basically providing for everybody else, the football players are going to be making more money than your lacrosse player. But do all player. the players make the same amount? I would doubt from that the too. school. I would doubt that too. I okay. think there's got to be some type of based off of starters, bench players. You know what I mean? I would have to imagine that. But they're still working out the details. But okay. just this announcement, I mean, we lived in a time where they were making billions of dollars off these kids and then spending millions to not pay them in lawsuits. <laughs> like, be like, yo, we're not, we're not paying you guys. So the fact that they've even come to this agreement is huge. I mean, that's big time, for sure. I think they're starting to realize that it, the game has changed with the NIL deals and then now with the college football playoff. The NCAA's power isn't as much as it used to be. Now, they still have March Madness, which they got a, a hold on. But, like, I think they're starting to realize we need some good favor. We need – they might wake up one day and be like, we don't really need the NCAA. Like, why are we even – you know what I'm saying? Right. So, it's like I think they, they they knew that they had to change with the times in that in that respect. Um, I'm actually really excited. I used to play the college football EA sports game all the time back in the day, and then they stopped making them mm-hmm. because of the name, image, likeness uh, soon, so, lawsuit that they faced. So this is the first year they're actually coming back out. I just put money on it this week. It's coming out in July. But I'm really excited for that because, you know I mean, the kids are going to be making money off of that. With this settlement, former athletes are also going to be getting some type of compensation. I don't know how much, but something um, for because of the amount of money that they have. Yeah, there's too many former athletes. That's what I'm saying. Where, where does it go back to? That's, that's what I was wondering too. Is there something like I said? I, I think I'm, I'm applauding it. If it's 20 million, right, for all the teams, they're not making that much money. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like it's gonna be life changing money. But you consider maybe if you're making a couple thousand dollars, you can live off of that. And maybe if you have an NIL deal, be be stacking that away. You know well, what I mean? Well, not so, all players have an NIL deal. Exactly. So. Yeah. And after you weren't getting the eyes that an uh, that a NIL deal athlete would get. Now you still have some type of uh, revenue coming in. So That's it. Do what you're going to do with it, man. Invest it. Get paid, young N-word. Get paid. <laughs> Spec, have you heard? Spotify released a uh, top 100 greatest hip-hop songs of the streaming era. Now, I'm assuming the streaming era would be uh, 2015 until present day. Yeah. Because I guess that's when... Yeah. Sounds I'm trying to think right. back, yeah. I, don't I mean, I when it streaming. got big, big. yeah, that- yeah. yeah. I don't even think I was streaming in 2015. I wasn't, but it it, it, it existed big time what, at that we, point. We downloaded, we downloaded I didn't a lot start. Of shit I didn't start <laughs> like thinking until maybe like 16. Did you? Really? I, yeah, because I, I, I started paying for Spotify around 2016, 2017. Okay, I think 2019 is when I actually got Apple Music. Apple Music, and then I just got over to Spotify. Now I had the free Spotify, right? But I got, uh, but I paid for Apple Music. And then I really liked it. That was like that was like, oh, everything is available at your fingertips. Like you could think of, you could type in. And then I was like, Spotify, just I was like, let me yeah, get Spotify. So around I, I would say fifteen, like that's probably, you know, that's a good year to say streaming like took off, I guess. Now I don't like these lists because I feel like a lot of them just do it to make headlines and to get people mad talking. But I so I'll just give you the top ten, which actually, if we're going back to 2015, I think might be appropriate. You let me know how many of these you actually listen to. Juice World, Lucid Dreams at number 10. Pop Smoke, Dior, number 9. Number 8, 
Sheck West, Mo Bamba. Number seven, Sicko Mode with uh, Travis Scott and Drake. Number six, Migos and Lil Uzi Vert, Bad and Bougie. Number five, March Madness, which is one of my favorite songs. I play that daily. <laughs> uh, four, Lil Uzi Vert, EXO Tour Life. That's another banger. Uh, Drake's God's Plan. Like, that, I don't know, but I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. But Drake's God's Plan is a great song. Two would be Cardi B, Bodak Yellow. And number one is Kendrick Lamar, All Right. Um, now, this is like a hip-hop list? Yeah, or? only hip-hop. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm about to, okay. Yeah, only hip-hop. Um, my beef with actually Kendrick Lamar, I think Kendrick Lamar should be number one, but maybe not with All Right, because... That's basically saying that's Kendrick Lamar's best song of the streaming era. Like, you're basically saying this is Drake's best song. God's Plan is Drake's best song of the streaming era. And I don't believe that to be true. <laughs> I, I, I would put Nice for What at higher than You said than that's I um, Spotify's? Spotify's list, yeah. But I, I don't necessarily think they're going off of, like, this got the most streams. I think this is just their... I did it, actually, because Drake got... No, I could, Drake because... Drake got $2 billion. Yeah, Even B. when I, like... No, because... Um, Drake got more than Cardi B does, and she's higher than him in terms of God's plan. Because it shows the total amount of streams. I was, I was saying the list might be based off of most streams, but it's not. It's based off, like, opinion. Like a, that, oh, is yeah. it? Yeah. Because she has 800. He has, like, yeah, because Kendrick Lamar has 600 million. She has, like, 890 million. But Drake has, like, for God's plan, uh, 2 billion. Oh. You know what I mean? Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. But it's just, like, I love God's plan. It's a great song. It's inspirational. It's just like, yeah, no, to no, me, no. it's not the best Drake song of the streaming era. You know what I mean? Like, but also, like I said, I think they make these lists to get people to pay. And I think it's a great list. This is actually the majority of songs. I don't really listen to. It's an okay list. <laughs> it's just the top 10. But um, all these songs, if they came on, I would listen to. I wouldn't even put Kendrick's All Right. Like, that, if that's the only song that he even got on the list for, I wouldn't even put that song. Pop Smoke Dior. Like, well, I'd be welcome to the party if I'm going to do a Pop Smoke song in it. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. it's just, yeah. But once again, like I said, I think they just do these for, to get people talking, to get the people going. <laughs> but right now, spec before we get up out of here, bro, I want to talk to you about some things I've seen on the internet, man. I see things on the internet. I bring them to the table, see if my guy spec has seen them. Dude, there was a, a father. He made a viral video um, basically saying his daughter was being bullied. He made a plea to the parents to... You know, let's meet up, let's talk, let's figure this out. He went up to the school, he spoke to the principal, so the bullying wouldn't stop. Um, she still didn't stop after her parents, you know, spoke to each other. So him and his brothers jumped the dad. Of wait, the wait, wait, wait. So the grown, like, so the father? The father okay. now jumped, him and his brothers <laughs> now jumped the dad of the bully oh, okay. in front of her Shit. to teach her a lesson. <laughs> now, I don't think it's real. I'm not going to lie. Oh, I, mean, not? Okay. I might be able to pull up the video, but... um. <laughs> To me, it's not real because he's admitting to a crime on social. I don't think like why wouldn't you? You know what I mean? I mean that's that. I I can that's some people just like that. I mean, you question why would they? But I can see that. I mean, things happening to your kid can make you crazy. Yeah. Now nah, let me see if I can find the video. Hold on. Twenty year old girl who had to watch me and my brothers jump her daddy out to school. I'm sorry. I know that was probably a traumatizing experience for you, but we kept asking you to stop bullying my daughter, and you wouldn't listen. We sent letters home. We even had a meeting with you and your parents, and you wouldn't listen. So now you know your actions have consequences. And since you're too young to receive those consequences, you had to watch your daddy take those consequences. Get some therapy. You would be all right. But no, nah, I certainly wouldn't have did that. I would have <laughs> like that. Just seems like the wrong way to to handle it. No, nah, I mean just because I know what the what the consequences go. I would have told. I would have pleaded with my kid to whoop that other kid's ass. And you will not. You may get suspended, but you will not get in trouble at home. But it's your daughter. What are you gonna? If she's not built like that, you know. Well, what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. I, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So I mean, obviously, if your kid ain't built like that, but that would be in my perfect dream, like. I would like plead with my daughter, listen, baby, take that chair and <laughs> like if she's bothering you that much, um, that's the only way to deal with a bully. Mm. She gonna, I'll try and scare her into what well, because I can't touch the kid and I'm not me going after the parent that I don't think that's gonna do much. And so, but I know if my daughter got the courage, if it's a bullying situation, mm. like. 
that's gonna that's gonna do a lot of things. That's gonna give her a ton of confidence. That bully will more than likely stop bullying her. Yeah, she ain't gonna to have to. Bully, yeah. She ain't gonna have to worry about other people bothering her because other people gonna see what she did to that bully. Mm-hmm. Um. So, but you know, like you said, every kid ain't built like. But that would be like what I would want to see. People are like, "Why did you jump him? If uh, if you why didn't you just find a man up?" And he's like, "I need to prove a point." He's like, "Life is gonna jump you." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, the little girl wasn't getting the message. But yeah, that's the that's the father of the bully girl. Him and his brothers jumped the guy. I it's just a bad way because you're now you're perpetuating this violence. You're causing more trauma. He it could have went left. Like that guy would have been justified to pull out a weapon at that right. point if he's getting jumped. You got kids around. It's just a it's, it's a real ghetto justice mentality way of doing it. But a lot could have went left. So I don't think it's real because why would you post it? And put it online. Well, this, you'd be surprised what people do. With that's these, what I'm like. The dumb shit people do with smartphones. <laughs> but like, but and like you said, it's very get. I mean, but people live like that. I yeah. mean, so I, I hey, and I, you make very bad decisions when your kid is being messed with. I think. Yeah. Like my daughter told me has told me some stuff, and I I do get those same emotions. But I also I'm not gonna be naive enough to be like I'd be like. What did you do in this situation? Like, not to say she caused it, provoked it, or any type of way, but more so to tell her, you got to see the flat, the red flags. If this person's acting a certain, most people give you some type of advance warning that something's gonna happen, whether it's directed at you or somebody else. You got to be able to pick up on those signs and remove yourself from them as fast as possible. Right. You know what I mean, and that's so that's instead of just blindly taking her side on it, and I'm not taking the other side. I just more so want to discuss what happened instead of just being blindly mad and acting like this dad, but. I do, if, if, if I took all the steps he took, I, I wouldn't jump him. I would find some way to take legal action. But I do see why that mentality would feel like you've, you've left me with no other choice. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, for sure. One other video, and I actually just seen this, actually, so I so I can still find it. They are treating these WNBA girls wrong. These new rookies? <laughs> I just seen this. This is from 14 hours ago. Look how does she, um, look how she found Angel Reese, bro. Oh, I didn't even see that the first time. Check that out. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Show you a full dreamer. <laughs> Yo, why they so mad at these rookies, bro? Um, you know, well, one, uh, you know how it is. <laughs> Show you, they think they're going to come in here and... Yeah, we got chartered know. flights yeah. now. <laughs> you don't wanna... know, I mean, it's because of these rookies that y'all going to y'all gonna benefit from it. But you know, ain't no love. You still gotta tell you still gotta get your rookie hazing. <laughs> ain't no love lost, man. Nah, I had another one where they like found the shit out of um Caitlin Clark. Yeah, I seen I seen that <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, I, yo, they 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 definitely making them get their growing pains out here, bro. It's uh it's crazy. But that was wild. <laughs> That's a man foul. For all y'all think that the WNBA is just too soft. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, respect. That's another episode in the book, man. Thank you for coming out today, brother. Where can my people find you at on social media? Nowhere. You can find your guy, DJ Playboy, on uh, X at DJ Playboy. You can find me on Instagram at Plickapeezy, P-L-I-C-C-A-P-E-E-Z-Y. And you can find me on Instagram as well under at Perfect Talk Radio if you want to follow the Perfect Talk podcast. So go check us out. And, of course, check out the website, www.perfecttalkpodcast.com. Dot com. That's where I got this slick little perfect talk shirt today. You know what I'm saying? So go pick yourself up one. Get yourself a mug. Get yourself some stickers. I don't know if y'all can see the stickers behind spec on the board back there, but we got some perfect talk stickers up there too. So go get yourself some merch. You know what I mean? Keep up with everything DJ Playboy and catch all the episodes, man. We are going to be found in much more places real soon, so I'm going to let y'all know where to find us. But of course, go check us out on YouTube. You know what I mean? Uh, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Hop in the comments. We love that, man. And uh, keep showing us love, yo. But another episode in the books. I'm tired. You're tired. You tired? I'm about to go celebrate this birthday, man. Yo, spread love. It's the Brooklyn way. And we yes, about out of here, y'all. Peace. Deuces.